Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of POA for you. Now today we're going to go through the specimen paper for N levels 2021, uh, paper 2 question 4 and the topic is on inventory. Hope you enjoy it and let's get right into it. So this question has multiple parts, let's look at one at a time. Uh, the first part of deliverable is an inventory account and they give us certain movements of what they, how what's affecting the inventory account for the month of March. Now let's take a look at what we could do about this. Um, inventory account, cash at bank account or any account, the format is this, right? So remember these formats where first column, date, particulars, debit, credit, balance, right? So let's put the year first, 2020, March 1. Particulars always starts with a balance brought down. Uh, that's the beginning balance of the period and it tells us that it's $5,000 worth, 500 pairs of shoes. So that's how I would reflect this and that's already going to be one point. Then March 8th is the first activity. He sold 500 pairs of shoes and when he sells 500 pairs of shoes, the double entry has a few sets, right? So the first one is debit, uh, let's say he sells it uh, on credit. Did he sell it? No, he put it. He sell it. Yeah, he sold it on credit to main. So accounts receivables or trade receivables, right? Uh, May and credit sales. And then the other entry would be um, the other entry would be debit uh, cost of sales and credit inventory. Okay, and for this part, we know that this is 500 pairs of shoes and this is the same 500 pairs since it's first in first out so it's going to be the cost of the inventory so it would be five hundred dollars a five thousand i beg your pardon and since it's a credit to inventory account in your inventory account you reflect this on the credit side five thousand dollars moving backwards the particulars all you need to put in the particulars is the other side of the journal entry so this other side of the same journal entry set is cost of sales so you're going to put cost of sales and the balance would be the balance plus deb any debit item less any credit items which is zero okay next uh, on march 12th march 12th eric purchased 40 pairs of shoes cost 400 dollars on credit from lp supplies so what is the double entry and double entries are so important, right? Because everything is double entry based. Uh, the double entry would be debit inventory, Ooh, whoop. credit, trade payables, uh, LP supplies. Okay, how much would this be? $400, so let's put 400 here. Now this $400 would go into the debit side of inventory, like what we mentioned before, it's 400 here. And what do we put in the particulars? Make a guess. Correct. The other side of the journal entry, which is trade payables, LP, uh, LP supplies, right? And in the balance here, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna copy the formula, and it's gonna be 400, right? As a balance uh, of inventory left. Now next item we sold eric sold 40 pairs of shoes to young so the same 40 pairs he bought from lp supplies he sold it to young so march 19th what is the double entry for sales all right so we we think about the double entry first double entry would be you know debit let's say trade receivables young and credit sales this is one part of the double entry the other part of the double entry is debit cost of sales and credit inventory so any sales related double entry has two sets right that's the the special thing about sales related uh, journal entries and the inventory side would be 400 right because it's the same 40 pairs of shoes that you bought so that's the cost of the inventory so under inventory i'm going to credit here 400 and what do i put on this Particulars, correct. The other side of the journal entries, which is cost of sales. All right, I'm gonna do this, and then it's gonna be zero. Now moving along, March twenty first and March twenty fifth. 
uh, for some reason, Yang decided to return the shoes to Eric. So he returned 40 pairs of shoes as well. So all 40 pairs are returned. And what is the double entry for sales returns? It's the opposite of sales double entries. All right. So, you know, just for you, if you digress a bit, it would be, you know, this one would change to credit. This one would change to debit. But then you're going to debit sales returns instead. All right. And then, uh, similarly, cost of sales would be credit. Inventory would be debit because you're putting in more inventory back into your books. And inventory is debit in nature. And that's why it's going to be like that. So, you're going to have inventory of 400 reflected here. And what do you put here? Exactly, cost of sales. And it will be 400 debit. So that's the uh, reflecting all the transactions. There's one last step, don't forget. Uh, to reflect on the first day of the next period, April 1st, balance brought down. And you just take the balance from the last number there and then reflect it as a debit balance. That's it. The first question, part A, is that. Now let's look at part B. Part B asks us what's the cost of sales for March, right? So you know all the different cost of sales entry. So you just have to cost of sales equals to 5,000, right? You had 5,000 first, you debited cost of sales, you credited inventory, and then you debited cost of sales with another 400 right 400 so you plus 400 and then march 25th you credit the cost of sales to bring cost of sales down because of the to account for the return so that's your equation which ultimately ends at five thousand dollars right that's it yeah very good so the first two it's done now uh, the first two uh, parts are done now let's go to the part c eric is thinking of changing supplier he's looking at sk trading who is uh, from overseas right and he purchases about three thousand pairs of shoes per year so he's been working with lp supplier for 10 years so what what, what do we do now uh do we uh the, the the question asks us to make a recommendation on whether eric should choose lp or sk uh and just two reasons why you know right he should choose sk trading so there are going to be quantitative factors so factors relating to numbers and qualitative factors as well that you could consider let's look at the quantitative factors first and uh, i'm going to put lp and sk side by side and just calculate how much it will cost uh, eric on an annual basis to buy from each party assuming three thousand pairs of shoes right so list price per unit and this is my thought process here um, and then uh, annual annual volume annual num pairs of shoes uh, purchased okay so it's three thousand and three thousand so total cost of shoes only equals to this times 10 right and for sk okay it's really lower right but you know there's delivery charges so delivery charges uh delivery fee per 100 pairs is 20 for lp and 45 so it's slightly higher let's see what the total delivery cost per year is um is estimated to be right total estimated okay so it's equals to first three thousand divided by 100 times twenty dollars right so this is the annual cost of the delivery fee so total cost total cost of purchasing uh shoes including delivery okay Oops, delivery spelled wrongly. Delivery this is equals to, you got it right, the total cost of shoes only plus the delivery per year. So it's 3600 with LP and 28350 with SK. So clearly, SK is cheaper. So my uh, recommendation based on this would be Eric to 
explore uh, to choose sk since cost is lower and this would improve uh, profits in Eric's business uh, okay the second reason he should also choose SK to build an alternate an alternative supplier source uh, in case um, LP business LP faces issues with supply uh, in future right this is just as a contingency okay um, now I would also so there's so much other information here like uh, refund replacement which is different right so for example refund LP gives the refund a bit faster than uh, SK um, similarly for replacement LP gives the replacement quicker so you know it's from a working capital and cash flow point of view LP would be able to give you the cash back for any refunds quicker and it will help you take the cash and turn around to do whatever you want to do for your business so Eric I would say however Eric should also uh, review his working capital position uh, to see if he is comfortable with the new refund and replacement policies right so I think that's about it for this question now thanks so much for watching uh, it's been a pleasure and if you have any questions uh, asked over this channel or email me at poa for you at gmail.com my email address is uh, always on the top left hand corner of uh, these workbooks and um, if there's any other um, things that you would want me to try as a question you know you, you could reach out to me then as well if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so there will be more questions that I will post as uh, I, I get them and if you like this video, go ahead, click like. Uh, good luck and see you soon.